God is the truth. And I'm a messenger of that truth. All right, let me say this uh, to all of my viewers in Miami. Uh, services were starting back up there in Miami. Uh, we are renting facilities there, and God willing, we hope to buy a temple there soon because what we are renting, renting can hold uh, a few hundred, but there's no room. The people is coming from all over the place, whether it's in Miami, whether it's in Tallahassee, whether it's in Orlando, whether it's in Fort Lauderdale, all the locations, amen, and in most cases have ran out of room. People have packed up and leave their churches. I'm not saying they just leave in apostolic churches. I don't want a message that's pulled people out of apostolics. Uh-uh. I want a message that can pull people out of everything. And I thank God for the message of holiness, how it's pulling people out of everything. Catholics are writing me saying they're going down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Atheists are writing and saying how now they believe that there's one God and they understand Jesus Christ is he. Baptist preachers are going down in water. Hallelujah. Thank God in the name of Jesus Christ. Even Mormons. Amen. We had some Mormons went to one of the other locations. Went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ and one of them came out speaking in tongues. Had the spirit of God give up. So then... We are grateful. So I want to say to all of you that's in the Miami, Florida area at the Double Tree, uh, the Hilton Hotel in Miami, Florida Convention Center, 711 Northwest 72nd Street in Miami, Florida, October 25th, November 29th, December 27th. Brother Minister Abraham will be holding services down there, October 25th, November 29th, December 27th. At the convention center in Miami, Florida, 711 Northwest 72nd Avenue in Miami. That's at the Doubletree Hilton there in Miami, Florida, at the Miami, Florida there in the airport. So you go there. Leave your church. Just leave it. Don't ask, don't ask me. Who, don't tell me who your pastor is. In fact, I want to encourage your pastors. Leave your church. Pack up. Get out. Win, Pastor Jennings. Uh, now, I want to give you an early head start before 2021 you get here. Someone said, do you think God is coming in the year 2021? No. I know he ain't coming in the year 2021. Not for all career. How can you say that, Pastor Jennings? I keep telling you. God ain't coming back for the world until the word of God is fulfilled first before his arrival. And I advise you, don't rush him. You better be glad he's taking his time. They give us time to mend our ways. Amen. Now, I want to say to all of you that uh, are loyal to Trump, amen. Yes, yeah, I, I don't hate the, uh, the wicked fella, but pray for him. Pray for Trump that if it be the Lord's will, that he will heal his wicked body and deliver him out the hospital if that's the Lord's will. Now, I know the Trump viewers are watching because the moment I mention Trump, his followers cannot wait to bombard our program, amen, with their sarcasm and their hate. But uh, no, you Trump followers and loyalists, I don't hate Trump. I don't, I don't hate nobody but the devil. And I hate the devil that's in folk. But uh, the very man that cried wolf, the very man that cried hoax, very man that criticized everybody else for wearing a mask, God showed him that you are nothing but just like anybody else. Yeah. God showed him that he's less than nothing. Amen. Did you hear me well? God showed the president of the divided states that he's less than nothing and that he's not above being afflicted like anyone else. He's not above it. Amen. So when he was criticizing others, telling them that how weak you are if you wear a mask and making fun of people that wear them and you that was going to his rallies following the lead of a fool. 
Am I right, I said? It's not asking too much to put a mask on. They wasn't asking you to take your life or asking you to lose your life or asking you to die for America. Surgeons wear masks. Yes. Men that weld steel and iron wear uh, a type of facial gear. So he made mockery. And now he's paying the price for his own mockery. Amen. And now he need help from God. Eh? Now he need help from God. I hope this is a lesson for you Trump loyalists. Stop thinking because you love a man. You got to follow the full advice of the one you loved. Use wisdom. I believe Solomon said wisdom excelleth folly as light doeth darkness. Oh, I'm pretty sure I probably got if you got a thumb on every hand, five thumbs on the hand, they probably taking the whole hand and putting it down. <laughs> All right, let's dive into the book of pain. I want to go back to work to what we worked on in the 11 o'clock session. Amen. 14th chapter of the book of Romans. Yes. Amen. And William was reading, and I was marking. I said, I said you was reading the scripture and hitting on your desk like you were preaching. <laughs> He said, Pastor, he said, man, he said, I couldn't help it. He said, I couldn't help it. He said, God was thundering that thing through you so much. He said, man, I got so overwhelmed. I just had to, I had to read and hit. He said, I, I just couldn't help it. I was mocking him. I had him laughing. I was just mocking him. But, uh, you know, you got to have a love for this. And we're living in a time now and where you can't go everywhere and be fed. And you know how scary that is? Viewers, consider this. The word of God says in 1 Corinthians 1.10 that God is beseeching the church and uh, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you all speak the same thing. And then he gave the reason why that there be no divisions among you. That you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and same judgment. But think of this. If he only have one church in which he does and he purpose that everybody speak the same thing, you're supposed to be able to go in every church because every church is supposed to have the same faith. Every church is supposed to believe the same thing. You may differ in rule, for the Apostle Paul said there are differences in administration. That means administrative rule. What do you mean? Well, we may say, all right, when you come in, hit your knees. Another church may say, well, when you come in, let's open up with a song. Them that hit their knees first cannot speak against them that start off with a song. Why? That's just a difference in administration and doctrine don't require me to start out with a song or start out uh, in prayer. Doctrine don't require it. Amen. That's just administrative that required. The Bible says coming for his presence uh, with a song or in singing and the Bible also say be instant in prayer. Amen. But doctrine don't say that's the way I got to start my service. The Bible just say that the wish of God must wish of God in spirit and in truth. Now do you get what I'm saying? But according to doctrine, glory to God, it don't change. It don't change. I say it don't change. Doctrine is written here. And it won't go to the left nor to the right, but it must stay within the guidelines of God everlasting word. So every church, every church, supposed to preach the same thing, believe the same thing, and have the same thing. And if preachers believe this, they won't think their congregation or their quote-unquote so-called miniaturized movement would be the only ones in heaven or the only ones with God because that's where a lot of us believe. Uh, we don't go, we're going to be the only ones up there with the Lord. Uh, you think like a fool. The only ones going to be up there with God is holy people. The Bible speaks plain. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection on such a second death have no power. And I know that there's holy people everywhere. Everywhere. What do you mean holy people? Them that follow the holy commandments of God and obey them and do them. God will liken them unto a wise man that build his house upon a rock and a storm coming, wind coming, flood coming, beat upon that house. Or we'll take God but the house stands. 
All right, the 14th chapter of the book of Romans. I want to take my time and soak you a little and atomize this. All right, follow me. In the book of Romans, chapter 14. All right, let's turn me ready up, please. Let's give him some more juice. Amen. Amen. My, my mouth is bigger than his, too. All right, come on. In the book of Romans, chapter 14 and at verse 1. Yes. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. Listen, I want to take my time and teach the church. The church from our Lord Jesus Christ, God's people. Him that is weak. That is weak. In the faith Notice receive Notice the ye. language of scripture. Not only did it point out his spiritual condition, but it point out he's weak in, in a particular belief. In the faith. In what? In the faith. Hold it. Let's balance that out with these figures four or five quickly. I want to establish what faith is talking about. In the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and at verse 5. Begin at verse 4. In the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and at verse 4. Yes. There is one body. There is one church. And one spirit. One spirit. Even as ye are called. Even as ye are called. And one hope of God, your calling. The Bible calling. says the Lord has spoken and have called the whole earth. From the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. I don't mean he called everybody to preach now. Right. I don't mean everybody is called to preach. No, not at all. All right. One Lord. How many? One Lord. Well... I'm settled on that right there. Just one. You to have more than one, I advise you to come on back to Scripture now. Come on back to Bible. One Lord. And just live by the rules of this one Lord because I'm going to tell you right now, it's hard to obey him. Yes, it is. Isn't it? Amen. Man, obey this one Lord is exhausting. Yes, it is. It'll tire you out, beat you down. Obeying this one Lord is just trying to obey him, make you turn your plate down. Amen. Make you deprive yourself of apple pie. <laughs> And candy yams and turnip greens. And make you push that big container of macaroni and cheese aside. Well, it makes some do it. Some. I put it that way. It makes some do it. Yeah. Amen. Some they're going to fill themselves up regardless of what happened. All right. One Lord. One Lord. One faith. One belief. And? One baptism. All right now. So the one faith that many are weak in. Him that is weak in the faith, the Bible says, receive ye, meaning accept him, but not to doubtful, to doubtful disputations. I don't have to prove to you how sincere I am. Not to doubtful dispensations. You may doubt that I'm saved. I ain't got to prove it to you. You may doubt that I receive Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Glory to God. I ain't got to prove that to you. You may doubt that I'm determined to walk with God. I don't have to prove that to you. What make different ones doubt the other? Because the one that they're looking at is striving but yet have weaknesses. Mm-hmm. And they exploit those weaknesses and cause them to bring about doubtful disputations. Amen. Listen at this. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye. Him that is weak in the, in the belief of God. Receive ye. Accept them. It, it didn't say judge them. Receive ye. It didn't say backbite them. It didn't say uh, try to slander him or her through do uh, tweets and text messages and emails and sit around and talk about them. No. Receive ye. All right. Let's enlarge on the variation of weaknesses. Fifth chapter. Book of Galatia. Begin at verse 18. And the book Get of Galatians. And the book of Galatians chapter Follow 5. Follow me, viewers. And you preachers and you churches, you better follow me. All right. Book of Galatians chapter 5 and at verse 18. Yes. But if ye be led of the Spirit. If ye be led. Now hold it right there just a minute now. Let me explain this led of the Spirit now. Because I meet a lot of people that say I'm, I'm led of the Spirit. <laughs> I'm led by the Spirit. How do you define being led by the Spirit of God? Is being led by the Spirit... Is a feeling, 
or you woke up with a thought in your head it's being led by the spirit because you felt some force pushing you on your back being led by the spirit because you got the feeling you got the feeling I got the got the got the feeling all right James Brown <laughs> being led by the spirit because you couldn't sleep at night everything I just described are the variations that people say a spirit is leading them or God's leading them let me make something clear God have never led nobody to do anything perform anything say anything that contradict the will of the spirit are you listening God speaks he speaks according to what's written not against it I don't care what spirit got a hold of you spirit in your actions is not going to make your actions contradict God's word and it's not going to do it why the spirit said to believe on him as the scripture have said and when anybody blame anything that they're doing and say the Lord made me do it don't 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 get scared don't tremble when that deed contradict the word of God you ain't even got to turn your back that's why when someone tell me Pastor Jennings like a man wrote me and said the Lord told me to warn you I don't believe I'm above warning not at all I don't believe that because it was Achabus that brother warning concerning to a uh, brother Paul of what shall befall him when he would travel to a certain place so it's not a man of God above warning no but uh, when someone said Gino Jennings the Lord told me I'm gonna tell my act all right tell me brother or sister what did the Lord tell you to tell me and then while you're talking to me the script is gonna be going across my mind like a stock market report <laughs> and if I find one lie just one just one the size of the hair of a gnat's baby toe. I'm a blast at the hell. And I'm going to let you know right to your face, the Lord ain't told you nothing. Absolutely nothing. So this fellow wrote me a long letter. He said, I, I feel it in my spirit, Pastor Jennings. God, he said, I, I will even fly to Philadelphia to tell you and sit and talk to you about what the Lord told me to tell you. But he put in his letter what the devil told him. It wasn't the Lord of heaven because he said the Lord told him to tell me that I better stop baptizing these people in the name of Jesus Christ. He said I better stop. He said Pastor Jennings I, I just got to give you this warning. No you got to stay where you are. For I don't believe nothing. Nothing. But what's written here. I won't accept nothing. I don't care if a man get up and preach and stand on his hands and then his pants legs drop up to his thighs and reveal his white socks. I don't believe nothing but what's written. When it come according to what is written, then I have confidence in it. Then I can rest on it. Then and only then will I accept it. Hmm? Amen. I had people come to me to my own passage, and the Lord told me, and all that jerking and shaking and yelling, Pastor Jen. The Lord, and I just listen. Pastor Jen, the Lord, told me. like someone put a branding iron to him, and I just sit and listen. Pastor Jen, oh, Pastor Jen. Amen. <laughs> walking around, they're walking around in my office, shaking their hand, <laughs> waving their hand. Amen. I remember one brother, he said, Pastor Jen, the Lord moving me to tell you. And he yelled, oh! And I said, oh! He yelled again, oh! I said, hey! Then he said, you feel the truth? And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, why you kept doing that? I said, well, you was doing it. I didn't want you. 
I did not want you to be lonely. <laughs> Glory to God. You see what I'm telling you? And you know, my wife, she often tells me, she said, boy, you ain't got good sense. I say, yeah, I know it, but when they touch in that book, do not let performances that people do convince you that this thing is from the Lord. For God ain't got to shake you or bake you for that thing to be true from him. When it's from him, it's according to what's written here. That's right. Moving and yelling and screaming, I don't mean it's from him. Not at all. I believe in the days of Micaiah, Ahab had about 400 false prophets encourage him to go up at Ramoth Gilead, telling him to go on up there and prosper. Uh, but Ahab said, isn't there not here a prophet of the Lord besides? And uh, he was told, yes, there's yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Emla, by whom we may inquire uh, of the Lord. But uh, Ahab said, I hate him. I don't, don't even bring up Ahab because he don't speak no good concerning me, but evil. And then the king was told, let not the king say so. So a lot of people have been conned, duped, lied to. Women are married today, men are married today because some woman came to him going off in a tongue saying, you are my husband. And she already got one. The man today been skipping around going off in some tongue. Thus saith the Lord. Yeah, uh-huh. And uh, she fell for it and got married. But yeah, he already got a wife. So the Bible advised us this, or what you got, first epistle of John, chapter four, begin at verse one. I wanna take my time and soak you real good. First epistle of John, chapter four, Listen. at verse one. Says what? Beloved, believe Beloved. not. Beloved, believe not. Every spirit. Every spirit, what shall we do? But try the spirits. Try, wait a minute, spell spirits. S-P-I-R-I-T-S. It's more than one. Spirits. Try the spirits. Whether they are of God. Now, this is the way people have quoted that scripture. Try the spirit by the spirit. <laughs> no, it didn't say that. It says try the spirits. The spirits. Whether they are of God. Now, viewers, and you that are here, how can you try spirits? The only way you can try or test or evaluate spirits. You got to have knowledge of spirits and the best knowledge of the spirit world come from the father of spirits, which is God. Wonderful. Amen. I have tried spirits by what's written. By the time I sit quiet, evaluate, listen, because the loudest speech is when nothing is said. Are you listening? The loudest speech in many occasions is when nothing is said. No one say, I don't understand that. Well, hang around this message. You will understand. That's right. All right, let's go back to the book of Romans now. I want to itemize this. I want to take my time and soak you a little. Back in the book of Romans, chapter 14 and at verse 1. Yes. Him that is weak in the faith receive you. Now, everybody that's in God's church is weak in some area. What do you mean? There's something they ain't up to. That's, true. That's all. That's all that means. It's just something you ain't up to. And everybody need God's help to come up to that thing. If there's something I ain't up to, I ain't gonna fight the word. Let God work on me now so I ain't got to deal with it later. Wonderful. In other words, whatever it takes to get into the kingdom, yes, Lord. Am I right, I said? Yes, sir. Many of you get mad at me as if I wrote the Bible. I ain't writing no Bible. I was on a talk show earlier last week in Delaware, and the, I had my dates mixed up. I suppose I, I suppose I go this Thursday coming. But I looked at the uh, dates wrong, and I end up there last Thursday, but uh, he didn't mind. He said, come on in, Pastor Jennings. He said, and then he told me what the date was. I said, well, I must got it mixed up. He said, but you're here now. I said, well, I can go and come back. He said, oh, no. I got you here now, brother. We let, let, let's, let's talk. He said, some people feel as though 
when you preach the word of God that uh, you always been saved and that because you preach against sin so strong, you don't give nobody a chance. I say, oh, no, 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 oh, wretched man that I am, who shall be able to deliver me from this body of death. No, my job is to preach against sin because God said so. Otherwise, in that viewers, Gino Nicolius Jennings, born in the wicked city of brotherly hate, Philadelphia, and Temple Hospital, if it was left up to me, I wouldn't preach against no sin. You know where I'll be at this morning, viewer? I would be at a nice, mellow, laid-back jazz club, holding my wife's hand, sitting down in a 1947 atmosphere of someone playing the piano in a very mellow way. Amen. And, uh, you know, someone singing at the microphone. <laughs> Amen. But instead of doing that, I'm here. Poetic God. <laughs> Telling you what the Lord said. <laughs> it's not in no man of God on his own to preach against sin it is the nature of man to uphold what he loves why you think the preachers of the world don't preach against sin and they don't preach against no wrong at all it takes God to get in a man and make that man preach against everything that he wants to do, everything he never done, everything he's big enough to do. Then God said, preach the word. Well, Lord, when? He said, be instant. In season and out of season. Reprove. And when you reprove, that word going to reprove the preacher. If that word that he preached hit him, he can't detour it. He got to take it. If he wanted to be strong, hallelujah, glory to God, and get into the kingdom of God, he got to take the same medicine that he's given you. Wonderful.